All right. Um, speaking of cancers, the Cardinals shut out the Giants, twenty-three to nothing. In Arizona, it's the first Cardinals shutout in twenty-five years. Cardinals quarterback Drew Stanton gets the start, throws for two hundred and nine yards and two touchdowns. Giants quarterback Eli Manning throws for two sixty-three and three turnovers. And Larry Fitzgerald keeps it going, catches nine for 119 yards and a touchdown. Cardinals safety Antoine Bethea had two interceptions from Eli. And uh, when you get to this point, when you're sitting at 2-13, and 13, not surprisingly, the Giants are having some locker room problems. Recently injured safety Landon Collins calls out corner Eli Apple, calls him a, quote, cancer to the team on a radio show on Monday or uh, Tuesday. Um, the Giants then on Wednesday suspend Eli Apple for week 17 for, quote, conduct detrimental to the team. Uh, Eli Apple was a first-round pick and has three years left on his deal. What do you think of the Giants' locker room situation, Stoyle? It is a dumpster fire. <laughs> That is not how you want a locker room to behave. And, yeah, that's not good, Eli Apple. Um, I understand if your first-round rookie is uh, or second year is missing games because of injuries, that's fine. It's still unfortunate. But when he's missing games because of um, just issues detrimental to the teams, that is not what you want out of your first round pick. I don't know what's going to happen to him. He could potentially get cut. I don't know who else would pick him up. I don't think he's that good to have that kind of attitude either. Yeah, I mean, the you can't have this in a locker room. You know, you got teammates calling you out. It's not a good look. Um, Landon Collins isn't known as a guy to call out teammates. He's trying to be a leader on the team, so... Obviously, there's something going on there. And uh, Eli's still young, and he was a first-round pick. So there, maybe there's one more shot. Maybe one more team will take a chance on him. Um, but hopefully it's just New York, and hopefully if he goes somewhere else and gets a fresh start, regardless of where he's at, hopefully he's got a better uh, attitude and a better work ethic and can uh, thrive in the NFL. I mean... Not a good start to his career, though. Um, on Monday, on Christmas, we get we had two football games. We had the Steelers crush the Texans thirty-four to six in Houston to clinch a first-round bye. Uh, ben Roethlisberger throws for two twenty-six and two touchdowns. Texans T.J. Yates gets the start, throws for 88, 83 yards and two turnovers before leaving under concussion protocol. And uh, Tyler Hineke replaces him. Texans' Alfred Blue rushes for 108 yards. Um, and Texans wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins catches four for 65 and a touchdown, including what could be the catch of the year over Steelers corner Joe Hayden. Steelers corner Mike Hilton also recorded three sacks. Did you see this game? What did you think of that Hopkins catch, Doyle? Good catch. <laughs> yeah. Definitely one of the best catches of the seasons. That's, uh, yeah, great catch. Pretty, pretty nice. Do you think, uh, do you think the Steelers, I mean, uh, what do you think the Steelers need to do? to uh, go that extra, beat the Patriots in Foxborough and get that extra, um, take that next step? Uh, they need AB back. Yeah. I think that's going to be huge for them. And I wanted uh, the Steelers to beat the Patriots so they would have home field advantage. They could still technically win out uh, next week and have New England lose, but... I think that New England's going to have home field advantage and somehow they're going to have to go to Foxborough and take care of business. It's a tough place to win in the playoffs, but if you want to win the Super Bowl, you have to beat the best. 
And yeah. I cannot wait for that game. I think that's how it's going to be in the AFC Championship. And can't wait. Yeah, should be a hell of a game. Um, like you said, Antonio Brown coming back could be huge. And uh, hopefully Le'Veon Bell is healthy throughout the playoffs. And he's going to be a definite X factor, especially when it comes to the Patriots. Um, the other game on Christmas was the Eagles clinching the number one seed with a win over the Raiders, 19-10 to at the link. Um, this game was a lot closer than the score indicates. Nick Foles throws for 163 and a touchdown. Uh, Raiders quarterback Derek Carr struggles once again, throws for 140 yards and two interceptions. Amari Cooper had a nice 63-yard touchdown, but not enough for the win. Um, it was a sloppy game, included seven fumbles and three interceptions. Um, neither Derek Carr nor Nick Foles really impressed, and uh, with... Nick Foles leading the Eagles. Um, I know you've said it before. You're not a believer. How? What do you think the Eagles are going to do in the playoffs with Nick Foles? I think he's a decent uh, backup, but you don't want to have your backup playing in the playoffs. Yeah. If you look at his stat lines, he had 163 yards on 38 attempts. That's not what you want. <laughs> you would like a few more yards, but... Yeah, the Eagles do have a good defense, a decent defense, and good rushing attack and some receivers, but it's going to come down to coaching to see if they can kind of hide their backup QB. Yeah. And I feel bad for the Philadelphia Eagles fans. Uh, they have not won the big dance yet, and it all looked great till uh, Carson got hurt. Yeah, it's weird with the Eagles. It seems like something always happens to keep them away from it. You look back at the last time they were in the Super Bowl and Terrell Owens gets hurt in the playoffs and has to play in the Super Bowl through an injury. Yeah, and that came down to uh, a field goal as well, so it was the closest they've ever been to winning a Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, that's sports. You have to figure out a way to win. Injuries happen, and that's why we watch the game. You don't know what happens on any given event Sunday. Yeah. A season can change in over one play. And we saw that with the Lions, a perfect example, where um, it looked like the season had been parted, and they had a nice clean look going into the playoffs, and comes down to a Bengals team that they weren't quite ready for, and the Bengals shock them, and just like that, your season's over. Yeah, and that was... They should have won that game easily. We trashed Cincy, yeah. but... I don't know. It's just coaching any given Sunday, really. Anything yeah. can happen. This is why football is the most interesting sports in the world to me. Yeah, exactly. You can play football on paper all you want, but once you get between those lines, once the football is kicked off, you never know what can happen. Um, so let's get into week 17. we got some predictions here. Um, on Sunday, we'll have the 11-4 and Panthers at the 9-6 and Falcons. Falcons need this win desperately. Where do you see this game going? I'm going to say the Panthers are going to win this one. Yeah. I think that Cam Newton would like to uh, finish the season on a high note, and it would be always good to knock out your division opponent. Yeah, big game. Um, Atlanta needs it. Their backs are against the wall. I tend to agree with you that I think Carolina is the better team. And we'll go farther in the playoffs. Um, I'm actually going to pick the Falcons in this one um, by like three points. I think it'll be a solid game, and it's going to take a big performance from Matt Ryan, and uh, the defense is going to have to slow down Cam in some some sort of fashion. Um, 
the Jags at 10 and 5 at the Titans who are 8 and 7 it's a must win for the Titans to try to get into the playoffs any chance the Titans win this they are at home I don't see it yeah I think Mariota has struggled this year I don't think their coach is doing a good job there um they lost some games where they should have not lost this year. Just a few weeks ago, they were almost a lock to make the playoffs, and now they might miss it. Yeah. So, I don't see it. I think that uh, Jacksonville is just going to be too much for that Tennessee offensive line, and Mariota has kind of taken a step back this year. Yeah. I expected more out of him. He has uh, three more picks that he has touchdowns. Wow. A QB rating of 78.6. It's almost a 20-point drop since last season. So. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's the right coaching for him or if he's even in the right system. Yeah, I'm not. I never have been a big Mike Malarkey fan. Um, I do think, however, that the uh, that the Titans find a way to win this. Um, the NFL is strange sometimes. The Titans beat the Jags earlier this year. Maybe they have their number. We'll see. It's a big division game, season on the line. And the way Jacksonville confused me a little bit against San Francisco. I don't know if that's uh, Jimmy Jesus or what, but Gar- but Garoppolo torched that defense. And uh, I'm going to say that maybe Jacksonville is taking a step back. Maybe they hit a cold streak here. So I'm going to take the Titans in an upset here. Um, the Jacks were also arguing on the sideline their defense in yeah. the first half. And that's not what you want to see uh, deep into December. Yeah. You don't want to see that. And Bortles just started turning the ball over last game. So it could be a bad sign for the Jaguars. We'll see. Um, I'll I'll take the Titans by four. Um, Bears, five and ten at the Vikings, twelve and three. Do you think we uh, finish the year out on a win? No. (laughs) Not at all. I give us a, maybe a 5% chance of beating uh, the Vikings, unless the Vikings just bench everyone. Yeah. Which is a possibility. It is. Depending th- on what Philly does. Yeah. I think, uh, I'm not sure where if they're still fighting or not, but even if the you Vikings... Know, they're one game behind... The Eagles, the Eagles have two losses. The Vikings have three. Yeah, so that might put them... Either way, the Vikings are trying to get a first-round bye, and that's most important. And if they can get home field advantage, even better. So I think that they will be ready to play. And I don't see the Bears getting the win. Uh, Not a great year, once again, for the Bears. The Vikings are looking good going into the playoffs. Um, and what was supposed to be a great game to determine one one team going to the playoffs, the seven and eight Packers at the eight and seven Lions. Both teams have been eliminated from the playoffs. Uh, who do you see finishing out the year on a better note? I'm actually hoping this is going to be a, a tie, a two-two <laughs> game. Two to uh, two. I'm not gonna watch it i hate both of those teams and this is the one game a year where i don't really have anyone to cheer for especially since both of them are out of the playoffs just like us so it's nice to say it's nice to see them both miss the playoffs i mean if we're gonna lose the playoffs why not them too yeah misery loves company (laughs) I mean, if you're looking for that 2-2 two two score, it'd be nice if the Lions were to start Dan Orlovsky again. <laughs> <laughs> he might make it easy on him. Ever. Yep. <laughs> but anyway, it should be a hell of a week. Week 17, can't wait. Um, yeah, we'll be back next week with the crew, 
and uh, we'll be ready to go at it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for the thanks to the loyal fans. Don't forget to subscribe. Keep uh, keep looking. We're gonna have some guests coming up here soon, so keep an eye on that. And uh, have a good week. Have a good New Year's. Thanks for listening. Stoyo, we'll see you back on next week. Absolutely. Sounds good. Get ready for John Fox to get fired. <laughs> Can't wait. Can't wait. All right, have a good one. Thanks for coming on, bro. Absolutely. Peace out.